Hello everyone, I am Sir Kenneth Dugay of STEM Teacher PH. Ang pag-uusapan natin for this lecture video ay ang Extreme Value Theorem. Let us start with its definition. A function f continuous over a closed interval a, b must give both an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum value at points in the closed interval a, b. Let us start with our conditions first kung kailan natin pwedeng gamitin ang Extreme Value Theorem. Una, yung function must be continuous. Wala dapat tayo makikita na holes or gaps given the graph of the function and then dapat meron tayong closed interval. As you can see in our graph here, mula kay A hanggang kay B, so they are closed interval. Then ano yung meron? They must give both an absolute maximum, dapat meron siyang pinakamataas na value, and also the absolute minimum, meron din siyang pinakamababa na value. So let us observe this graph, tapos hanapin natin kung ano yung absolute maximum at ano yung absolute minimum. So let's start. Here, etong point na nasa taas at x is equal to b, ito yung pinakamataas na point ni graph. So, this is our absolute maximum. And then, kung hahanapin naman natin yung absolute minimum, andito naman siya sa pinakamababang point at x is equal to a, we have absolute minimum. Pero, caution lang, hindi palagi na yung absolute maximum at absolute minimum ay makikita natin dun sa dulo ng interval. Kaya we, ha we also have to consider etong dalawang points na nandito. This point C, tsaka this point D. Dito muna tayo kay point C. Mataas din siya na point. Kung makikita natin, yung value ay paakyat. Tapos pagdating kay point C, bumaba na siya. So pataas siya, we can call this point not the absolute maximum but the relative maximum. On other books, ang tawag sa kanya ay local maximum. Same here at point D, pababa yung value bago tayo pumunta and then kapag nakalampas na tayo ng point D, paakit naman siya. So as we can see here, merong pagbabago ng value ng graph. This is not the absolute but this is the relative minimum na value ng graph. Kapag ka makikita natin yung relative maximum at relative minimum at point dito sa dalawang to at x is equal to C at x is equal to D, Etong dalawa na to, na kung saan makikita yung relative maximum and minimum, we call them as the critical numbers. Importante sila sa pagkuha ng values ng absolute maximum or absolute minimum later on. Kasi kung titignan natin etong pangalawang graph, we have here, etong point na to at point C, this is now the highest point in the graph. Kaya this is the absolute maximum. So let me write it down here. The absolute maximum. At eto namang nasa kabila, eto yung pinakamababang point given this graph. This is the absolute minimum. So let me write down here, absolute minimum. Kaya hindi palagi na nasa dulo si absolute maximum at absolute minimum. Pwede rin silang nasa gitna. Pwede rin nandito sa critical numbers. Kaya they are important. So now, tignan naman natin ano yung property na meron ang critical numbers. If we will be relating this when it comes to derivative, ang derivative, that is just the slope of the tangent line. Kaya kung titignan natin yung slope of the tangent line, given the relative maximum or the relative minimum, kung ipa-plot yung tangent line dito, as we write it here, yung slope, this is a horizontal line, the slope of the tangent line or the derivative, f prime, at x is equal to c is equal to 0. Same here sa baba, kapag drawing naman natin yung tangent line, the slope of the tangent line or the derivative at x is equal to d is equal to 0. Kaya para makuha natin yung critical numbers, this point c and then point d, given a graph, kukuhanin natin yung derivative niya. After getting the derivative, i-equate siya to 0 kasi we can see that sa relative maximum at sa relative minimum, sa critical numbers natin, the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero. Kasi kapag nakuha na natin sila, we only have to consider yung dalawang dulo at yung critical number or critical numbers given the graph. Now let us apply this dito sa example. We have to determine the absolute minimum and absolute maximum points given the function at the close interval AB. We are given with f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 4 at 
the closed interval negative 1, 2. Now, let us apply yung konsepto na pinag-usapan natin kanina para makuha natin etong dalawang values na to without even plotting the graph. Simulan muna natin sa pagkuha ng critical numbers. To get the critical numbers, let us first get the derivative of the function f of x getting its derivative f prime of x, this is just equal to applying power rule, ang derivative ng x squared is just 2x tapos ang derivative minus ng 2x is just equal to 2. Kasi ang derivative ng x is just 1. So, 2 times 1, that is 2. Tapos, eto constant, its derivative is 0. Kaya, ang f prime of x is equal to 2x minus 2. Ngayong nakuha natin siya, for the critical numbers, balikan natin siya sa taas, the slope of the tangent line is equal to 0. Kaya, ang gagawin, kukuhanin yung derivative, tapos i-equate siya to 0. Kaya, ganito yung gagawin dito. So, let us have our derivative, i-equate to 0. Kaya, eto ay magiging 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, we only have to solve for the value of x para makuha yung critical number. In our case, ililipat lang ito sa kabila. So, this will become 2x is equal to, this will become positive 2. Solving for the value of x, let us divide both sides of the equation by 2. 2 divided by 2 is just equal to 1. Our critical number, x is equal to, 2 divided by 2 is just equal to 1. Kaya meron na tayong tatlong points of consideration. Yung una, that is negative 1. Tapos yung nasa gitna, our critical number of 1 and then 2. Kaya ang gagawin na lang, let us have a table of value na yung tatlong numbers ang i-consider natin as the input. Tapos let us compare ano yung absolute maximum at ano yung absolute minimum. Now let us start yung value ng x. Yung una muna sa mababa, that is negative 1. Tapos yung critical number, that is 1. Tapos yung dulo, that is positive 2. Now, let us get our f of x. Mag-evaluate na lang tayo, ipapalit yung lahat ng values dito kay x dito sa given function. Now, let us start. This is equal to, simula tayo kay negative 1. We have f of negative 1 is equal to, palitan yung x as negative 1. So, this is x squared will become negative 1 and then squared minus 2 times x will become negative 1. So, this will become 2 times negative 1 plus 4. And then, this is just equal to, as we continue with our computation, negative 1 squared is just equal to positive 1, tapos minus 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, so minus negative 2 plus 4. As we perform our operation, 1 minus negative 2 plus 4, this is equal to positive 7. If x is equal to negative 1, f of x is equal to 7. Now, tapos na tayo kay negative 1. Dito naman tayo kay 1. Palitan ulit natin yung nasa loob. Burihin na lang natin to. So, let's change our input. We have 1 squared. So, f of 1. This is already positive 1. This is 1 squared minus 2 times palitan ng positive 1 plus 4. So, this is equal to 1 squared is 1. Minus 2 times 1 is 2. And then, plus 4. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 plus 4, that is positive 3. So, f of 1 is just equal to positive 3. Now, dito naman tayo kay 2. Burahin ulit lahat. Let us change our input. Palitan natin yung nasa loob as 2. So, we have f of 2 is equal to 2 squared from x squared minus 2 times 2 plus 4. This is equal to 2 squared is 4 minus 2 times 2 is 4 and then plus 4. So, you have 4 minus 4 is 0 plus 4. So, that is equal to 4. Ngayon, kumpleto na yung values natin. And then, observe kung ano yung pinakamataas sa yung pinakamababa. In our case, this 7, ito yung highest value. So, this is our absolute maximum. Tapos, ano yung pinakamababa? We have 3 here. So, at x is equal to 1, this is the absolute minimum. With this, nakuha na natin yung absolute maximum at x is equal to negative 1. Tapos ang absolute minimum naman at x is equal to 1, given our function at the closed interval, negative 1 and then 2, without even plotting our graph. This is it for example number 1. Tuloy naman tayo kay example number 2. We apply the same process. We are given with g of x is equal to x plus 2 cubed minus 1 at closed interval. This is at negative 3 and 0. Para makuha yung absolute maximum at absolute minimum, we use the same process as last time. 
kuhanin muna yung derivative ng function. We have g of x, ang derivative niya, g prime of x is equal to, eto we have to apply chain rule or the general power rule. Pwede mong ilet yung nasa loob as u, this is your inner function, and then you get the derivative ng buo, we have 3 here, ibababa mo lang, so this is 3 times x plus 2, tapos babawasan mo to ng isa, so we have 3 minus 1, this is 2, tapos multiply siya dun sa derivative ng nasa loob. Derivative of x is just 1, tapos derivative ng 2 is just 0, kaya ang derivative ng x plus 2 is just equal to 1. And then minus 1, or the derivative of 1, constant lang naman to is 0, kaya we are left here. Simplifying further, g prime of x is equal to 3 times x plus 2 and then squared. Kasi nagmultiply lang naman tayo ng 1. Ngayon na nakakuha na tayo ng derivative, our next step to get the critical number or critical numbers, let us equate it to 0. We have 3 times x plus 2 and then squared is equal to 0. To solve for the value of x, pwede mo siyang isimplify. Let us just divide both sides of the equation by 3. So this is, this will become 1. Ang matitira dito ay x plus 2 and then squared. In our case, ang kailangan lang naman natin is yung x. Kaya kailangan tanggalin yung exponent na 2. So with that, let us get the square root nung both sides ng equation. Kaya mawawala na tong square root, mawawala na exponent na 2. We will be left with x plus 2 is equal to 0. Solving for the value of x, our critical number is equal to negative 2. Titignan natin to, tapos yung interval, our interval is negative 3, tapos negative 2 yung nasa loob, this is the critical number, tapos yung dulo, that is 0. So now, gawa ulit tayo ng table of values, our input, yung nasa dulo, that is negative 3, our critical number, that is negative 2, so we have 3 and then negative 2, tapos yung dulo ng interval, that is 0. Let us get the value of our function f of x. mag evaluate na lang tayo. So we are given with g of x is equal to x plus 2 cube minus 1. Let us start with negative 3. We have g of negative 3. This is equal to, we are given with x plus 2. Yung x ay papalitan natin na negative 3. So we have negative 3 plus 2 and then cube minus 1. This is just equal to negative 3 plus 2, that is negative 1, and then cube minus 1. As we continue with our computation process, negative 1 cube, pagka nagmultiply tayo ng negative number ng tatlong beses, the answer is a negative number. So this will become equal to negative 1 minus 1. Negative 1 minus 1, we have the value of f of x that is negative 2. Then tapos na tayo kay negative 3, tuloy tayo kay negative 2. Palitan lang natin yung input, papalitan yung x. So let us continue with our process. We have negative 2 here, tapos this will become negative 2. Ang mangyayari, negative 2 plus 2, this is equal to 0 and then cube minus 1. So this is just equal to 0 minus 1 or simply equal to negative 1. If x is equal to negative 2, the value of our function is negative 1. And by the way, this is g of x nga pala. Kasi ang given natin ay g of x. So let me rewrite this one. g of x. Tapos kapag 0 naman yung input, palitan lang to ng 0. So we have g of 0. This is 0 plus 2. Same here with our process na nasa taas. So burahin natin yung nasa baba. We have here 0 plus 2. This is just equal to 2. And then cube minus 1. 2 cube is equal to 8. And then minus 1, if x is equal to 0, the value of our function 8 minus 1 is 7. Now we have our absolute maximum and absolute minimum values. Observing the values dito, ang pinakamataas is 7. Now this is the absolute maximum. And then ano yung pinakamababa? We have negative 2. Negative 2, this is now the absolute minimum. Now, this is the process kung paano tayo makakakuha ng absolute maximum and absolute minimum values given a function at a closed interval without even plotting the graph, applying yung konsepto ng extreme value theorem. This ends our lecture video. I hope that you have learned something. Thank you for watching.